Playing with snow is lots of fun. But if you want to keep your hands warm, you have to wear mittens or gloves because the snow feels cold. Take some snow into your bare hand. The longer you hold it, the colder your fingers get. Why? Is it because cold flows from the snow to your hands or because heat passes from your hand to the snow, as people believed long ago? If heat is an invisible matter that flows in or out of materials, we should be able to weigh it. This is the weight of a tray, an ice cube, and a cover. The pointer shows zero. All materials have weight. In melting, I should be losing weight. Does it? There. All ice is gone. Will the pointer show any loss of weight? No. Evidently, heat is not a material. What then is heat? It is a form of energy that can be used to do work. That is, to move things. Heat energy runs this earth-moving machine. If heat is energy, what is cold? Since heat is invisible, let's try to answer this by using light. When you remove light from the room, you are not putting darkness into it, you are taking away the light. Similarly, when you cool anything, you are not putting cold into it, you are taking away its heat. In order to find out more about heat, let's experiment again with ice. Like all other materials, ice is thought by scientists to be made up of very tiny particles called molecules. The molecules of all matter, including ice, are constantly moving. The speed of molecules increases when heated. So, when we heat ice, its molecules move faster and faster till those on the outside break away to form a liquid, water. If we continue heating the water, its molecules will move even faster. In boiling water, molecules are rushing about so rapidly that some of them shoot off into the air as steam, which is a gas. This experiment has shown that the same material can be a solid, such as ice, a liquid, such as water, or a gas, such as steam. Heat can also change the size of materials. Watch what happens when we heat the wire. The weight sinks. The wire must have become longer. When it cools off, the weight rises the wire becomes shorter again. Let's repeat the experiment using a different kind of apparatus. We've seen that heat speeds up molecules. When speeded up, they push each other farther apart and cause the metal rod to take up more space. This we call expansion. As soon as we stop the heating, molecules slow down, come closer together, and the material shrinks. This we call contraction. Let's continue learning about heat in a blacksmith shop. When one end of the metal bar is heated, the molecules on the heated end move faster. They, in turn, make their neighbors move faster. In this way, heat passes from one molecule directly to the next. This we call conduction. Metals are good conductors of heat. The smith can light a match on the end of the metal rod, which is not in the fire, because heat travels easily through metals. 
In contrast, some materials are poor conductors. For example, asbestos. The smith can put his hand safely into the fire when it is protected with an asbestos glove. Wool clothes are also poor conductors of heat. Air is another poor conductor. But air can be heated in another way called convection. Here you see heated air carrying the tin foil upward. And below, colder air is pulling the tin foil toward the flame. This shows convection. Sometimes you see heated air above a lamp or above a radiator. The heated air rises because cold air is heavier and pushes the warm air upward. But the sun heats the earth by a third means, called radiation. Heat can travel by conduction and convection only if there is some material present. Rays from the sun, however, must travel through empty space by this third way, by radiation. This is how it works. The large bulb is giving out radiant energy. Air has been pumped out of the bulb. Even so, when its radiant energy strikes the thermometer, it is absorbed and changed into heat energy. In this film, we have explored several things about heat. We learned that heat is a form of energy caused by the motion of molecules. The faster molecules move, the more heat energy there is in a material. We saw that heat may change the state of materials from solids to liquids to gases. That it causes materials to contract and to expand. And that some materials are good conductors of heat and others are poor conductors. Next time you play in the snow, think why we say that even snow and ice have some heat in them. <laughs>